Hi, this is Steve Buck uh, from Berlin, Germany. Poker Flat recording sublease uh, music that are my two labels that are running at the moment. Um, hello. The, in the culture, the nightlife culture, that probably a lot of kids, even their parents, had been already going out to house music and listen to this kind of music. And uh, back then, it was just brand new, and uh, it was something that was, uh, yeah, it was a very small scene. And uh, I think that's what made it very special back in the days for me, at least. I, 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 I felt like uh, very at home in these clubs and. Uh, it was the first time I heard a DJ mixing uh, uh, tracks into each other uh, without like having a break and playing the next uh, cheesy pop record or funk record or whatever. And uh, yeah, it's, it, I think a lot has changed since, since then and uh, probably in my opinion it blew, it, it, it blew a bit of, out of proportion. It got too big twice already and now we're sitting in the uh, in the most difficult times probably for the whole uh, thing um, but yeah I, I, I personally think uh, this is the, the, the typical saying of uh, not everyone understands house music and uh, it's it's been the, the best days have been always when it's then the scene has been a bit smaller and uh, uh, and when you had the feeling that people that were coming to the clubs really understood what was uh, happening and uh, and sometimes these days because it's, it became so um, I don't want to say overground but it became such a big part of the pop culture that I think um, uh, you, you, you attract a lot of people that don't really that don't really are interested so much in the music they're interested in seeing like a big name DJ or something but the music is just uh, secondary and that, that's something back then the music uh, at least for me and I think a lot of people in the club has been the first thing and then but also it was mm, mostly gay clubs at least in, in Hamburg uh, where I went to uh, so the atmosphere was quite different a lot of people went there because they found their own space uh, to be um, who they were and today uh, it's, it's very, very uh, difficult in that uh, type of aspect as well, because uh, now it's all, you know, like uh, clubs for everyone, which is a great thing. Um, so it's not like really uh, a small niche anymore. It's like a really big, really big uh, thing. Um, a friend of mine, my girlfriend at the time, she said uh, there's this new, there's this new music called house music and uh, there's a club in Hamburg and they play this kind of uh, music and uh, and I was really interested in music anyways uh, but I haven't heard of it at, the, at this point it was I think in 87 must have been and uh, so I, or 88 I, I'm not I'm not exactly sure um, anyways I, I went to a record shop to before we went to the club and I wanted to check out what this kind of music was because you know I haven't heard of it and uh, and uh, I knew hip hop and everything, and you know, like the the break dance from the white uh, white style days, and and uh, in, in the mid '80s, and all this kind of stuff. So I went to the record shop, and I was like, "Hey, you have some house music?" And uh, I bought two compilations. One was the House Sound of Chicago Volume One, and then something else I, I forgot. But um, and uh, so I yeah, I picked them up, went home, and listened to them, and I fell in love immediately with the type of music, which which was mostly a lot of vocals in there compared to what music is today sometimes or like, uh, you know, like especially the minim more minimal stuff. Uh, it was, so it, it was a very easy access for me. Um, and uh, yeah, and then we went to the club and then um, we luckily got in because we looked crazy enough because they had a really hard door. And uh, so yeah, from 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 that night on when, when I first, uh, I always used to dance a lot in the clubs and I mostly been the, one of the first uh, persons on the dance floor in the clubs in my hometown. Um, but the, then getting the feeling of uh, 
non-stop mixed music um, so like being able to dance non-stop to a very let's say simple groove because you know like the 4 4 the same speed all night and then uh, it really got me into uh, into like a I don't know into into a trance without you know doing drugs or something it was just it was just mind-blowing for me like also the atmosphere of the club it's it's till today I think that the way the club was set it was it was so hysterical from the lightnings and everything and the DJ was be playing behind the uh, dark uh, colored glass so you couldn't really see you just saw the shapes of him it's not like you know not people were not facing the DJ it was just the music on the dance floor and facing people facing each other and dancing with each other and, and it, yeah it was just an amazing atmosphere <laughs> Yeah, I think first of all, the, the, what you said the, that they, um, the, no one really wants to spend the time in, or invests the time in, in becoming or getting to a point, and they they don't see they don't see the steps that it takes to get to a point, and uh, and, uh, and yeah, they want the success super fast, and uh, it it works sometimes, but uh, basically. Then you you have nothing to fall back on. It's like it's it's better to grow into a career than you know just starting from zero and go like to a hero and then <clears throat> and then you know like once you're not delivering uh, a few weeks later, then suddenly people not interested because there's gonna be the next one. So to 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 build like a real like a real fan base, I think it it takes years. It takes time. Um, and and uh, it's probably probably better um, for the long run. It somehow it has been a part of, of of the change, you know. Like it's connecting people from all over the world and uh, bringing people of all colors and all genders together, and you know, like it's it's. It's uh, it's already done its part and, and it's still doing it, continuing to do it. Um, and especially in the world where it, where it feels like that in some countries there's like kind of a going back in in certain in certain um, in certain things that uh, that is that the music uh, kind of is important or the, the nightlife the way it is or the way it should be um or it always has been um it, it's it, it's an important part uh it plays an important role uh, because it's 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 working in a very liberal way um and it's open for um for a lot of people and to be who you are and i think that's really important and that's something that that uh in yeah in the whole world should also start to move forward instead of going backwards. I mean for a lot of a lot of bigger artists I think it's not it's not that they're easily at the edge of you know like uh, um, survival but like for for a lot of other people in this in this business uh, the light guys, the I mean I I don't know I could I could name hundreds of jobs, but it's gonna take uh, all all day. But um, so yeah, the, all the smaller jobs in there, or even like younger artists or like smaller artists who just uh, recently broke through or whatever, it's just, just for for them like to survive. It's like this if it's like a um, they're probably not the ones that that. Um, are making the money that the government is is uh, uh, is talking about uh, uh, tax-wise at the moment, but uh, they may be in the future. And if you cut them off now, then you're not gonna have like a follow-up on 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 young people that uh, gonna build a career in this, and then 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 um, then they're not gonna be able to pay taxes as well. So they they kind of killing a whole industry saying it's not it's not important to anyone but it's a big industry and it's important to a lot of people and it's creating a lot of jobs it's been creating a lot of jobs and and these jobs are worth uh, uh saving i'm i'm pretty sure they there's this uh 
this is fun uh, video from Goldie. I, I'm sure you have seen it as well, which kind of explains the situ situation um, quite well for for the artist side. Like uh, for for me, like I, I'm next year. I'm in this for 30 years, and uh, it's really like having tell you having someone tell you that your your job is not really worse you know like uh, doing it and and uh, you should retrain i mean come on after 30 years i've spent like i spent such a long way on getting where i am and and uh, spending a lot of money also on on equipment on taxes on on on, on many things to 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 uh, become a, 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 an artist uh, and make some money and 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 still be be uh, important uh, out there so and then having someone tell you you should retrain I mean come on and then you see that you see the funny the funny retraining um, things they uh, they um, they uh, tell people to because it's like a boxer I think I saw yeah I saw a boxer or something like that like who who <laughs> Who's gonna make money as a boxer in the next uh, in the next years? Like, is this a job uh, worth taking on? Uh, getting beaten every day? I don't know. Maybe that's something they think it's funny, but it's definitely not. It's it's a really tough situation, and it's really badly handled by a lot of governments in this world, unfortunately. I think one of the the biggest problems that that we have is that we. Um, we don't have a lobby we're not talking with one with one voice and uh, i'm sure that if if we, we would have been more organized all together than the whole nightlife industry uh, as one um, then we could could uh, speak with a better bigger voice and 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 explain our problems and uh, and uh, but if it's just only a very few voice small voices here and there and then of course, it's difficult uh, to reach out, and, and, and then you have a strong lobby of the airlines or whatever. The, the automobile industry in Germany, <clears throat> they easily got money, you know, from the government, and, uh, and uh, it's just because they're very organized in, in, in it. And, and uh, the funny thing is that Lufthansa got so much money from, from the government over here, and they only employ 138,000 people in the world. So I don't even know how many people it is in Germany. Of course, they have also like smaller companies uh, uh, working with them or for them. But it, it's just you know like you feel like wait a minute, we're such a big industry like worldwide uh, and uh, in every country, especially in Europe, uh, for so many years, and it's just it, it's just a joke. Um, yeah, um, yeah. The 50s release of Rotary Cocktail with uh, you and me, as you as you mentioned, is just came out. Um, then I had uh, another one on Poker Flat with uh, my mate Clay and uh, with vocals by Robert Owens. Um, that has also just been out a few weeks ago. Um, but now there's been a pre-release of the first track of the new album coming out on November 13th. It's called uh, Never Ending Winding Roads. It's an album that's mostly created uh, during lockdown. Um, and uh, yeah, in, enjoying the, at that time, enjoying uh, having extra time to be in the studio and uh, being able to write music in one piece instead of, you know, having the breaks every weekend in between. And, uh, and um, yeah. Apart from this, there's also a new um, new EP coming on Rejected Recordings, also with my mate Clay again. And then there's a lot of stuff lined up for next year, but that's too early to talk about. I've been definitely busy in the studio and I've been really enjoying it. But uh, it would be great to tour, to tour again at one point and you know see people and be on the dance floor and be involved in the whole in the whole thing. But uh, Fingers crossed. <laughs> it, it would be it would be great to see you know like most of the clubs getting through this somehow and and uh, it, it's really sad to see clubs go especially you know like clubs you played you have like a stronger relationship with and stuff like that uh, of course um, than clubs you have never played but it, but still it's just it's just seeing clubs die because of 
of governments don't understand our business it's just it's just a terrible thing to watch and and i really hope for all of us that that there's a lot of a lot of what has been before it will still be around afterwards and uh artist wise uh a lot of people that you know like work in the nightlife and and clubs as well you know like it's important Hi, thanks for watching. Again, this is Steve Buck. Uh, you've been watching the Behind the Headphones from the Random Rave Project. Mm -hmm.